Good morning and afternoon and evening and whatever time you're watching this, ladies and gentlemen. We're just plain living here on St. Patrick's Day week. And color something green. How about sending me some money? <laughs> I'd love that. Need some I'm green. John Gray and my cohorts. <laughs> I'm Peggy Burton. Good morning. And I'm Jim Fuller. And that's let's a, drink that, some green beer. That was a great way to start there. Send me some money. Yeah, yeah. I know that's, the, that's the color green I like the most. Yeah, absolutely. That is, good, that is a good green. Yeah. You had and, a good week. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I just hope it doesn't come another did, flood. Well, I was yeah. going to say, did, did you get your boat out? and? We were, we were down on the lake Saturday night at my friend Ronnie Hughes's house, and he lives on the lake, out on a point, he was blowing the furniture off of his porch. Oh, really? really? I mean, the wind was trucking down yeah. there. And, you know, we didn't have any rain Saturday day to speak of Not anything. Not really, that's right. And we hadn't had much rain in the few days before. When we came home, it was, it was a little before midnight and came down Cedar Lane. That creek was full, the yards were full, the baseball field was full, mm -hmm. and it usually takes a couple of days to do that. Right. And that happened in a matter of hours. Right. So did you get up on your car? I mean, no, did, no, did you no. Have any it problem? was just, it was just. Because uh, I, I was, Alan Gray was riding around town and he was talking about some streets being well, this, closed. Well, uh, Jackson Street had water, it was flooded yeah. in it. That didn't happen. Right. No, no, I don't think I've seen that happen. No, I was still living so. on the lake there. Although I don't have a lake, that Rock Creek was right. flooded the fields below. Oh yeah, over there, on, over there on Cedar Lane, it happens yeah. a lot. Know, a lot, yeah. I used to live on that street, and and uh, it's, uh, you know, I've seen it up in the the road. I guess it's oh, Maple yeah. Hill Drive. Uh, you know, well, you know, and there was there. one time uh, right here in our studio, which is on Wilson Avenue. Right. We had water up in this building. We oh, did. Really? I think that was yeah. a drain, though. Yeah, there was some dry, there was some drainage that, problems. Uh, yeah. Well, we were in a monsoon in the Philippines, and in our living room, water was up above our ankles. <laughs> were there any snakes in there? <laughs> no, luckily. Alligators. But I never panicked. It's good to be young because you don't well, panic. You know, it's like you didn't own the house. Oh well, <laughs> the roof's blowing off. <laughs> it, was, it was a rental, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was a rental, wasn't mine. <laughs> You know what John was talking about when we had when the studio flooded, and it was kind of kind of a shock to us because yeah. we're not exactly in the flood plain. But uh, but you know, thinking back on that, and that's been a few years ago, but it was happened on the day that we were taping Living the right. show, and uh, and um, we come in here and there's about three inches of water all through the studio. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh! And I'm I'm not sure why we would have done this. Because all this stuff is running off electricity. Yeah. We did the show. You did the show. Did. Yeah, we did the show. Of course That's we hysterical. Did. We did. Yep, yeah, we did the show that day. And, uh, we don't quit for anything. <laughs> well, as a child. However, many, however, in retrospect, that was pretty stupid, probably. As a child, many times, you know, the creeks down there around Beach Grove, they didn't have mm -hmm. good bridges or anything. And my school bus would be on one side, and I, I, we'd be all panicky because it would be getting dark and we couldn't get across the creek because of the flood, but my father would be on the other side keeping us calm. <laughs> and I would be tempted to get out and swim across, but he would always wait and the bus would sit there till finally it ran him down a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, we had a lot, and a lot of times he would be stranded across the creek in the barns, you know, yeah. when we were at the house. So yeah, I know about floods. Floods? Floods can take yeah. care of things that you don't think about. It can, it can change your mindset. You know, you start to be in, thankful for certain things. Well, water, <laughs> water is the most destructive thing there it really is. It really is, yeah. Oh, yeah. In any form. You know, I, I mean, uh, it, it can be, with a little bit of cold, it can be nature's jackhammer. Yeah. You, know, you take some water, put it in a crack, and let it freeze, and it'll bust. It'll bust boulders open. Yeah. Right. You know, I mean, it's a very, it's a very powerful force that we all have to have to survive. Yeah. Because our body is Chuck probably uh, Chuck Mangino's out here today because it's Pie Week, but <laughs> our body's what 80 percent water. Yeah. At least. Something like that. Probably a, little, a huge percentage yeah, yeah. of our body's That's why water. That's it's important to drink. Ask water. Chuck when he gets up here. I bet he knows. <laughs> he will know the exact Chuck will know. Chuck will know. He'll know how many drops it takes to fill a body up. I see your wife in She's the audience. Here. <laughs> That's my girl out there. She's getting ready to uh, 
shock out Alzheimer's. Which is that's fabulous. great. That's yeah. a great cause. Yeah. yeah. So uh, every everybody good. Everybody's good. Yeah. yeah. You you were gone. You went to Florida a little bit. I went to Florida. Had a good couple time. of days. Come two or three days. Mardi Gras a little bit. Mardi Gras yeah. a little bit, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> did you? Did you bring any beads back? Uh, my house is full of beads. <laughs> Anybody you didn't beads, go talk to us on the beach again, did no. you, Peg? <laughs> Not this time. <laughs> I don't know what has happened to us because I'm, I'm sitting here thinking that. <laughs> and I'm, and I'm thinking, no, you don't go Have back. you ever been to a Topless Beach? And here's beach. John. You know. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Well, it was the French Riviera. I was there with a bunch of folk singers and dancers and there was like 50,000 people there. So we went to the beach and the Topless was the big thing there. Not us, but it wasn't a pretty sight. I have to tell you, no. it was not a pretty sight. So you didn't go topless? No. Yeah. <laughs> she couldn't. She <laughs> couldn't feed all the men that follow her home, Jimmy. Well, that's true. But it, it just wasn't a pretty sight. You know, uh, you think of beautiful women, maybe it wouldn't be so bad, but they were all Everybody. all shapes and all, all sizes. That, hey. But, you know, nobody thought anything nobody, no. about it there. In Europe, that's the way it is. Yeah, that's are. just the way it is. Mm -hmm. We live in the Bible Belt South, and that ain't going to work here. Well, and, you know, <laughs> you say beautiful women, that'd be okay. And, and that really Well, that, I'm not saying that's that, okay, uh, but it might be, uh, look better. I don't John know. John and I are very lucky considering who we married, you know. But aside from that, you know, John and I did a lot of music together, and we were different than other people that did that. You know, you were men. No, I no. I mean, John and I had an appreciation for. I got to be real careful. I say, John and I had appreciation for all women. All women. Well, of course. You know, it doesn't matter. They don't have to be. No. You know, the perfect they model don't have or something to be like cheerleaders. that. Cheerleaders. No, no. A lot, of the, other, a lot of the other guys we yeah. hung out with. I mean, you had to be perfect. John and I just never were that way. Perfect is perfect is. Yeah. Uh, in the eyes of the beholder. Beholder. Beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder, and it goes far beyond that. It goes, it goes to things that you can't see. True. It goes to things that you can only feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it goes to the to the the mind and to the heart, and that's where I find beauty. Have you ever kissed the Blarney Stone? <laughs> no, but I've held my elbows to my elbows together at a party with hair on my arms. And people were blindfolded, and they came over to kiss the Blarney Stone. And it was your and, and, Well, we'd had somebody with his pants about halfway pulled down, and that pulled the blindfold off, and he sees that, and you, you, he'd been kissing your arms. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Boy. Well, Y'all are just beyond tacky. <laughs> it, 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 sure make, it sure made a couple of them mad. John is kind of... You know, Keller, we did that to Paul Keller, and it almost yeah. drove him crazy. Really? Really. Yes. Almost drove him crazy. He thought he'd kiss somebody's butt, <laughs> and it was just arms put together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know how that is. <laughs> I can see John doing that. We, had, oh, we did all that. kinds of fun things. Yeah. We had a friend in the Philippines that worked. You know, this was in the military. Kind of, uh, he put uh, uh, his friend after a party one night. He put a cast on his leg. And, you know, there was nothing wrong with him, but when his friend wakes up, he's got a cast on his leg. <laughs> We've got Franklin County young people coming Franklin in here today. Franklin County young people. We All sure right. Do. Isn't that good? They're going to talk about a really interesting thing. Good. Well, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of <laughs> neat stuff boys. going on. We've got, uh, <clears throat> we've got some things happening at South Jackson. We've got stuff at the high school going on. Uh, it's, uh, we're getting ready to uh, go through our boys' state candidates and that's always and, and, yeah, oh yeah, a it's lot a, of it's really a wonderful fine young men and I fine, fine young men that. and women that go to boys and girls state. You went to boys state, didn't you when you yes, were young uh -huh. men? Yeah. I went to Bob, Bob Couch, my father in law went to Boys State, I went to Boys State, my son went to Boys State. That's wonderful. Yeah. And uh, it's amazing these young people how now we for years we sent a lot of people to Boys State at the at the American Legion post forty three. But recently, the ones that we've sent, these guys come back and they thank us for sending, for them. sending them because we don't teach government in mm -hmm. schools anymore like I we did. I think that's a very sad. 
you know, we don't have civics classes, and, and, and I don't even know if there's a Tennessee history class like Tommy Allen used to teach. I don't believe there's Tennessee in, history. I in, do they believe they teach. What is the criteria for going to Boy State? The criteria, it's just these kids that turn in and it, 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 they, what they're involved in in school and, and uh, their grades have, a, have something to do with it, their attitude. Uh, it's not That's something thought, that we're yeah. always looking for uh, a 4.0. Well, I mean, 4.0 is not good enough now. It's 4.5, yeah. 4.6. You know, we're looking for somebody who, who cares. And, somebody and, who cares. Who cares about the country and cares about government and cares about military and and uh, that's that's the people who get to go and they yeah, come and back that's, and that's they ultimately come, decided by a committee by that, committee by yeah a committee that you and, answer to. and uh, they come back and most of them have no idea how government operates and they go to Boy State and of course it's about city government you have cities and they they elect aldermen and mayors and and then they go to the state and have state representatives and they elect a governor and we were fortunate enough to have a governor from Tullahoma uh, several yeah. years ago uh, Colin Bills right was and then uh, didn't we have someone else that we probably have throughout the years up. but that's that's the one that I was involved right. with and remember so uh, and it's a it's a they march they have a band they have uh, athletic teams. Each, you know, each each yeah. county has athletic teams, and it, it, it makes these kids understand what what it takes to to, to operate a and, city yeah. and a county. Because most of them, when they're that age, that they that they're not worried about that stuff. And they need to. They they need to they learn need to about all that. They need to understand it, but it's yeah. not taught in school. And I sort of feel like that. The last thing government wants is young people to learn know how the government operates. Would that have been in civics? Did they used to do civics? Didn't they used yeah, to, they used civics. to do civics yeah. and they don't do it anymore? What Before you got? we go, here's here's this here's today's offering. Life is not that hard to figure out if you look at it from the fool's perspective. The rest are all dancing to someone else's pull on their string. While the fool gets laughed at, that's his job. His ability to do it successfully allows him to eat, sleep, and perform in the same castle as the richest prince, who when ridicules, life explodes due to pride. Moral to the story, it's better to find satisfaction in some small space and have work than to be a dust print freshly painted over on the biggest stage. Wow. Yeah. So, I, I, can, I can see that. You know, so Does that, uh, that mean we're okay here. Yeah, that may, that, may, <laughs> that means don't depend on somebody else's definition of success for you to feel successful. Exactly. Or or don't let someone else's definition of of uh, fun or your dreams be cause you not to feel good enough because. If you feel good enough, then that's good enough. Yeah, you just forge your own path. You forge your own path, and it's yeah. okay. All right. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with the rest of today's show. Ford F Series has been the number one selling truck for over 40 years. Russell Barnett Ford of Tullahoma has a huge selection and up to $10,000 off original MSRP. That's Russell Barnett Ford of Tullahoma on Highway 55, home of the Lifetime Firetrain Warranty. Why buy anywhere else? Ah, the glory days. Running to daylight on the gridiron and chasing a ball with a mind of its own, cheering the team to victory, and marching to the beat of your own drum. Memories that last a lifetime. But sometimes we're reminded of our glory days in ways we'd rather forget. Get back in the game. The rehab team at Life Care Center of Tullahoma is ready to help you live and play well. Can you imagine a world without beauty, without color? without creativity, without art? Well, neither can we. Keep Arts Alive and experience all kinds of arts and crafts at the second annual Arts Alive Tullahoma on the newly renovated lawn of the South Jackson Civic Center, May 25th and 26th. For details, visit TullahomaArtsCouncil.com and come spend the day at our fun, family-friendly arts festival. 
Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. Hold that up. We're gonna we're gonna let people know we tried to get a clothesline done here. We are. There we go. Good morning, everyone. We're struggling. So no, we we're are. not. There you go. <laughs> Anything that's related to housework or cooking or laundry. We struggle. I'm, I'm kind of allergic to. <laughs> I'm Fran Gray. There you go. And I am happy to represent Alzheimer's Tennessee and Tullahoma and the south central part of our state. There we are. And we are working to sock out Alzheimer's. And I want you all to see today, I have on my socks too, but these are former uh, models of socks that we have used to promote Alzheimer's Tennessee. This year we have these, this is a new style, what do you call this? Houndstooth. Houndstooth. Orange Go big and, orange. Yes, orange and white with the state of Tennessee uh, in this white space. And on the bottom of each sock it says Alzheimer's Tennessee. And so this is a new model, this one. And these, like I have on, these are purple for Alzheimer's and orange for the state of Tennessee. and. We had the TriStar this year for the three grand divisions. So these are the newest and greatest Alzheimer's Tennessee socks. They are available in our office at 207 North Jackson Street. They're just $8 a pair. And we are really excited to promote these, especially because... Let's lay them down. Okay. My arm's getting tired. Okay. You know, it's a heavy load there, those socks. Yeah. Got, Socking out Alzheimer's is a tough is a tough battle. Yes, it is. But we're here to tell you about a great new event that's coming up on May 11th here in town, and it's the Purple Olympics. The Purple Olympics will help us celebrate all the work that's being done to help uh, people who are suffering with Alzheimer's and other dementias. Right. And we're going to have a party at the THS football field and track. Mm -hmm. That's on the morning of May 11th. We're asking people to form teams and come out and have a good time with us. We're going to start at 9 o'clock with registration and music and fun. And then at 10 o'clock, we will have a parade around the track. And we're going to have banners and flags. And every team is asked to provide a banner. Uh, if they don't have one, they can make one when they come to register and check in at 9 o'clock. We'll have the parade, and then we will have brain games as well as physical competition because we know that we need to be healthy physically and mentally, and we want to encourage that. So, John, do you want to talk, talk about the activities we're going to have? Well, I can do that. Uh, first off, is, is there's, like Fran said, it's not just going to be a walk or a run. There will be walking and running things that will happen, but one of the things we're going to do is, is ask each team to have a trivia team, because we know how big trivia is in this town, and exercising your brain if you're involved with Alzheimer's or dementia or trying to prevent that from happening is a great thing to have, so we're going to have a, a section of the stadium that we will have teams where we'll have trivia being done. Another brain type thing we're going to do is we have some maps of the state of Tennessee that we're going to take and make puzzles out of and we will have a pu each each team will have a, a group that will work on a puzzle and they'll have the counties. And so we all know Coffee County and we all know the counties that are around here but there's 95 counties in the state of Tennessee. And so I think it will be fun to try to put this puzzle together. This will be a timed event. All of these events will have points attached to them. We're going to have an adult tricycle race. 
Mm -hmm. So we have some adult tricycles being brought in to have a race. And if some of y'all remember the old Ralph Emery show where they had outhouse race, we thought we'd like to try to do that except have a hospital bed race. But the logistics of moving hospital beds out onto the track was just a little bit too much. So we're going to have a wheelchair relay. And we will have pushers and riders and batons. And we will push wheelchairs around the track and, and time that as well. Mm -hmm. We're going to have live tic-tac-toe, where we will have big tic-tac-toe uh, things taped onto the grass on the, or uh, make a board and then have individuals holding X's and O's to go out on teams and play tic-tac-toe. So uh, there'll be, uh, Cat Murray's going to be there, there'll be music, there'll be food, and, and it, the whole thing is, is to have an event that's a little bit different than most things that, that usually get done around here. It's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. I mean, I can't wait to see the adult tricycle race. <laughs> that is go that's going to be funny. And, and it's about awareness to the fight against Alzheimer's. And it's about the fact that Alzheimer's Tennessee has local offices and local representation to where there's someone Yes, they have a hotline as well, but this lovely lady right here is around. There's someone you can actually go to and talk to right now. Her phone, her phone is available, and it's not whether the office is open or not. If you need, if you need someone right now, there'll be someone for you right now. And that's what Alzheimer's Tennessee is all about. If you folks out there uh, in the related industries, life care centers, doctor's offices, uh, uh, wheelchair providers, anybody that wishes, please form a team. This is a free event. It is, and we're hoping that the teams will raise money to help us continue our research, our education, our support groups, everything we're doing to find prevention and cure and to support people who are suffering with any dementias right now. So that again is coming up on May 11th. We will get together at nine o'clock. The event will be over at 12. Uh, we would like to- Ish. Well, yes. <laughs> and we're going to have a kickoff event April 2nd. So we need to get our teams formed and for each team member to, or each team to provide representation at a kickoff event on April 2nd, 1130 at First Christian Church. So there'll be more coming out about that. Right. But we're really excited about Purple Olympics. We're talking to folks about uh, running, walking, tricycling in with a torch. And we're going to just really have a great time. So be a good uh, event. It will. If you all have any questions, please call me at 931-434-2348. Also, you can go to our website and get more information. And uh, we do have a, a good form here that you can get online. And again, form teams. Uh, you can have socks and sell those socks to help go toward your team's uh, donations. So be in touch with us. Again, we do have a few pair of the old socks, but you want to have the brand new, wonderful, purple and orange and white socks. And we believe all people are stars and you're gonna hear more about stars at our, our event. So um, we invite the community to come out, support one another. We are all affected by Alzheimer's and the other related dementias. So John. We're about out of time, baby. Yeah, and bless his heart, he doesn't even wear socks. I wear socks. I hadn't no. had a pair of socks on in 15 years. <laughs> uh. So. Please join us. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, don't forget, we're looking for sponsors, money sponsors. Uh, uh, if you're a bank, if you're a car dealership, if you're somebody like anybody who wants to be a event sponsor, there will be uh, there will be swag for you that goes along with that. But all the teams are asked to raise as much money as they can, any way they can, and there will be an awards banquet afterwards mm -hmm. this event will happen on that day and then then a couple of months later you'll have a couple of months for the teams to raise money and then there will there will be an awards banquet where the trophies will be given and all that down the road a couple of months mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. Is that right that's it folks we'll be right back oh hey
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is the paint. Uh-oh. I just knocked a tree over. This is the paint doctor. I got the color wheel. Now, you know what a color wheel is? It is the wheel that the paint works where you pick all your colors to paint your room. It could be a multicolored beard. It could be a underarm fan. You never can tell. One thing we do know is that it's time to paint. You know, you can make your wife very happy if you go to your house and paint some rooms or you paint you paint the outside of the house, the inside of the house. It makes them very, feel very good because you work hard for them and they like that. All women like to see their man sweat, you know? They do, they do. Honeydew is what they do. And you get to do it too. So you go to the paint works at 1960 North Washington Street and you see Dabbit David Eikonen over there, and he's the real paint doctor. He fix you up with color. It's so nice when the color is right. Go to Paintworks today, Martin Senor. See, Martin C. Nor, right there. Martin Senor at, at the Paintworks. Bye, and we see you next time. Ha, I'm burning up. You know what, guys? There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. What would you bring to my company? What do you need? I need problem-solving skills. I got through high school without a car, a phone, or a computer. No college degree, though. Not yet, but life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and we're pleased to have joining us on the set today, uh, Tullahoma Alderman Robin Dunn. And Robin's always got lots and lots of uh, things going on, and she's going to talk a little bit today about a subject that we all can probably identify with, because we know that we've had record amounts of rain in yes. the last couple of months, but we probably don't think a whole lot about how all that water gets drains out of sure. our city there. And, Absolutely. And I think that's what you're going to talk yes. about today. Yes, and, and the, the three things that I definitely wanted to make sure everybody heard um, was one, that the need for stormwater protection is growing, mm -hmm. and two, what's happening at the state level is changing, Okay. and three, is there's something that we can all do about it. We, mm -hmm. all of our, all, every resident can do something about okay. it. Okay. So, uh, you know, I think it's very obvious just from, from the different uh, uh, weather patterns we'd have lately. That, that things things are, are happening and um, I can't say I can't point to one thing in particular however my, my personal thought is the more you develop a, a, um, a property mm -hmm. the less place the fewer places that that water has to go but it has to go somewhere mm -hmm. and the last place I want it to go is in my own basement or my neighbor's basement so we have to make sure that there are reserved places where low-lying areas where where that water is 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 designated mm -hmm. so that's something that we have to do as a city to protect is make sure that we have particular greenways to go yeah and I bet you there's a lot of people that think okay uh, the water is standing in my backyard right. let me route that over somewhere else and it might go in their neighbor's backyard that's or exactly their right. basement and you don't yeah you know, so, so we have to make sure that there's sure. a plan so that it's not just one person you know just moving it somewhere else right. um, so that's something that's our responsibility on the city level on the state level it is anticipated in the next year to 18 months that we are going to have more stringent stormwater requirements mm -hmm. and I can't speak to exactly what those will be but it will be something that is decided and, and 
agreed upon between um, the Home Builders Association and several um, uh, environmental protections agencies have are coming together. They're in the decision making phase right now with uh, TDEC, which is the Tennessee mm -hmm. Department of Environmental Conservation. So it will be something that each of those gr uh, groups agrees is, is important or um, is uh, adequate. Mm -hmm. But it is expected to, to change a bit. So I don't want any of our, 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 our citizens caught off guard by that. So what I'd like to propose is that um, between now and then that we all take responsibility for this. Mm -hmm. This isn't just one group of people. This isn't just our home builders or our business owners that has to take responsibility. This is something we can all do to help. Um, so what I'd like for, for a lot more people to do is just think what are some small things that I can do in my literally in my own backyard mm -hmm. to help. And uh, I, would, I would like to encourage people to get rain barrels. Um, this is a great way to conserve water on your own uh, property and we will be giving those away uh, this uh, rain barrel kits at our upcoming Earth Day celebration. No kidding. We are. Okay. Yeah, and that's actually April 27th. I hope I hope to see a lot of folks out there. Um, that's going to be at Fraser McEwen Park. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second if I can. Okay. Um, but uh, you know, if you're if you're going to be fertilizing your yard, and now's the time to do that, right? Uh, look in the weather forecast as best you can because it seems to to change. But trying to keep from um, putting down that fertilizer, you know, just moments before it rains, that's gonna you know that's gonna lose you're gonna lose money doing that because it's just gonna be washed into the ditch. And and that's something else that our our, our creeks has to absorb. So uh, you know, just making. Sure Sure that it's got a chance to really settle on your yard. Beforehand. So you're proposing mm -hmm. that the individual residents get rain barrels yes. to reduce the volume of runoff from Absolutely. their property. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and if there's a way that you can have fewer impervious uh, uh, materials, you know, can you have a smaller driveway? Uh, just different things where it's not just shooting directly into our, our stormwater drains. Um, so just just little decisions like that can really make a big difference. So we're, the, the, the size of the driveway has to do with if it's paved or concrete, there's more runoff. That's that exactly right. So the more uh, driveway that you have, the less place that that water can go. It's just going to either shoot right into the, the street and into the ditches or it's um, going to run into your yard and there's there's less places for it to absorb. Is so. it a common occurrence in Tullahoma now for the drains to to have more volume than they can handle storm drains? Well, I, I think it's... I, I think we're just in a record-breaking year, but there's right. things that we can do. Um, I know that we have an awesome leaf pickup system mm -hmm. here, but it's really important that people put those leaves above the ditch mm -hmm. or to the side of the ditch, not in the ditch, because well, then that there's no place for that water to go, yeah, and suddenly great, the water's great all over. Point, great yeah, point, yeah. yeah, so I mean, and that's that's a little thing, but I, you know, I remember seeing on on a few streets something where where that seemed to be a real problem, um, and and really pay attention to what's happening. In, literally in your own backyard, are you? Is, has your uh, ditch grown more shallow? You know, I mean, are you? Do you have bare spots in your yard where you're having kind of um, a micro mudslide? You, I, I know we all have seen out in California all these horrible mudslides that have mm -hmm. occurred. Well, something similar to that can happen on the micro level in your own yard if it's not seeded properly. Right. So just making sure that those things are maintained. So. Right. You mentioned uh, Earth Day, and, yes. and uh, which kind of ties into the, the rain barrel kind of thing. Absolutely. So, tell us a little bit about the Earth Day. Yes, I'm so excited about this. So, April 27th, it's going to be at Fraser McEwen Park. It's going to be from one to five. We have several nonprofits are going to be featured. We have a, a few uh, uh, sponsors already. Cherokee Distributing, um, Interlocal Solid Waste Authority has has um, um, a, a, a given to us also. Uh, and if you're not familiar with that organization, ISWA, is responsible for our all, any of the recycling mm -hmm. bins that we have in Tullahoma and the compost bins. That was something that was, was, was given by that organization. Um, and then Old Shed Brewing Company is also giving. After, after our, our event at 5 o'clock, we're going to have, um, we're going to start seeing some bands. So mm -hmm. we do have a few bands lined up. I know Lee Gibson mm -hmm. from Winchester is oh, going to yeah. be there and he's got a great following. So I think it's going to be a great event. So. So, and, and the purpose of Earth Day, I assume, is to raise awareness of uh, yes. recycling and that kind of thing, I'm guessing. But yes, yeah, we're going to have several children's yeah, events, that. yeah, and, and we're going we're gonna to feature how, you know, how do you recycle, what's the right way to do. So we're actually going to have a few recycling contests for kids. Um, the, um, the 
Tennessee Wildlife Association, our uh, TWRA is going to be there. They're going to have some some information for people. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be a really nice event. And, t and Tullahoma really already has a pretty aggressive recycling yes, we uh, do. program, do they not? And a lot of people participate in it, we, probably not enough. But. We have about 30 to 35 percent of our, our, our folks recycle, which I, I just think is wonderful. And it's, it's grown a bit. I had a, a small group of volunteers and I, we've been calling different businesses and going door to door to different residents and just encouraging people to recycle. And that's been very positive. That's been a really fun thing to do. So we've had several businesses is adopt those um, those uh, cardboard dog kennels, you know, so that mm -hmm. you can, and that's been a great way to reduce the amount of landfill dependence that we have. So. And uh, just for the average person, it, it, it's pretty simple to recycle, oh, is yeah. it not? Can you comment on that? Sure. You know, I mean, as a as a citizen in Tullahoma, you you don't even need any special container. You can use laundry baskets or just uh, Rubbermaid totes or you know even even sacks if you have them. But we we recycle cardboard mm -hmm. and we have mixed paper. We have um, metals and plastics. So mm -hmm. you can have four different um, sections mm -hmm. sectioned off and. and um, it's just as simple as and that. And you can actually just put this in, a, in a, another separate garbage bag, is that correct? That's correct, And yes. set it beside your? Yes, yeah, set it beside your your, your, um, your trash can. And you would be surprised how much we have that we can recycle. It's estimated between uh, it, at about 70% mm -hmm. of what we throw away as, you know, just as Americans, we could either compost or recycle. I have no idea. And the city ultimately get, gets to resell that rather than... Oh, Put, yes. it, put it in a landfill. So oh that yes, it, it's, the financial reward is substantial. Yes, and just like with the stormwater care, you know, I mean, that's that's a huge thing as far as you know. Our public works department is very is stretched very thin. So mm -hmm. the more people are able to maintain in their own yard, the the less that we're having to actually come in with with scoops and 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 pull that out. Um, and the same thing with recycling. The more people are able to do on their own end, uh, mm -hmm. the less that we're having to pay. It costs about fifty dollars. Uh, truckload to dump our trash mm -hmm. um, but to with with cardboard we're, we're earning about fifty dollars to to recycle that mm -hmm. so that's a difference of a hundred dollars oh, just yeah. right there with the cardboard and you know I'm, I'm sure a town the size of Tullahoma can generate a lot of oh yes. trash and this is a significant uh, yes aluminum cans you're looking at four hundred dollars for a truckload of aluminum cans I right. mean so it's it's significant to, to we can we can we can conserve a lot of taxpayer money and make better use of that you know with things that people really do want like sidewalks and and uh, you know safer schools sure. that's that's what we want you know and to actually literally throw it away is just not yeah, a good use of kind of crazy yes sir yeah yes, okay it is, so. all right and you can learn more about that at this uh, Earth Day on absolutely uh, April 27th yes April okay. 27th at Fraser McEwen Park okay from one to five yes, Robin thank, thank you so, you much, so for much for coming back I appreciate it very yes, much sir. we'll be right back with more living folks right after this let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He does the work of two jobs, but only gets paid for one. He's tough enough to feed the man that gave him a lifetime of nourishment. <clears throat> he has the crazy strength to lift the man that raised him up without even flinching. That's right, no employee of the month bonus check here. This guy, no, this warrior, will always be by his father's side even if his dad will hardly remember. Good luck finding a gym to train for that. If this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. Is this the year you want to get fit? If so, check out just some of the things Tullahoma Parks and Rec has to offer. Kickboxing, aerobics, silver sneakers workouts, swim lessons, boot camp, water aerobics, basketball, Zumba, yoga, pickleball, lap swimming, treadmill, karate. 
Get fit, Tullahoma, and have some fun with Tullahoma Parks and Rec. When your family suffers the loss of a loved one, the caring and compassionate staff at Tullahoma Funeral Home and Coffee County Funeral Chapel are standing by to assist you in every way possible. We are proud to support local industry and offer only Batesville caskets. Many funeral homes don't own or operate a crematory. We utilize the only crematory in Coffee County. Your loved one never leaves Coffee County. We can accommodate any need and any budget. Consider our complete pre-need service to remove this burden from your family during their time of grief. Lock in today's low costs and protect from inflation. Tullahoma Funeral Home and Coffee County Funeral Chapel. Our family caring for your family. Talking history about this and that. It's conversations with John and Pat. With John and Pat. With John and Pat. Hello everyone, I'm John Rickman. And this is Pat Welch. And John, today is segment 42 of 42. Conversations with John and Pat. Well, since we've done this show, this jacket has been sitting back here and each time it does, it almost brings a tear to my eye. I can understand. Because I think about East Junior High, that's where I started. I, it was the year of August of 1969, 1969-70. And uh, I'm gonna play a song. It was one done by Ray Charles. I won't do all the song, but I'll do enough of it for you to remember the song. Oh, it's crying time again, you're gonna leave me. I can see that far away look in your eye. I can tell by the way you hold me, darling, that it won't be long before it's crying time. Oh, they say that absence makes the heart grow fonder, fonder, and tears are only rain to make love grow. My love for you could never grow no stronger if I live to be a hundred years old. Oh, it's crying time again, you're gonna leave me. I can see that far away look in your eye. I can tell by the way you hold me, darling. Won't be long before it's crying time. Oh, it won't be long before it's crying time. Man, John, you just made, that's not as good as Ray you, Charles. You got version. the whole studio a little misty there. Let me tell you, uh, the reason I do that song is because back at East Junior High School, early '70s, that song was popular. And if East would beat West, or vice versa, then one of the students from the school that won that night would call in to Ben's Jordan at WJIG. <laughs> Miss Jordan, we'd like for you to play crying time for the West Junior High football team because East Junior beat West last night. And little did I know when I came to Tullahoma that East was least and West was best. Well, see, I went to, my children went to East, <laughs> so I got conflicted. I went to West, and I was very aware of that saying and, and believed it to the depths of my heart. My, Mr. Wood, he corrected that by saying the least of East can beat the best that's of West. West right. He came <laughs> along and added to that, so that's what we used from then on. Uh, like I said, I followed, I followed uh, uh, Kelton Garner right. over there, and then came, Milner Carden was before that. Right. You came the year that my class went to the high school. Yes. We went to our sophomore year there, and Coach Garner came to Tullahoma mm -hmm. the, uh, our seventh grade year, mm -hmm. and he stayed at East the seventh, eighth, ninth grade years of, of my, what was my classmates when we got to the high school, and then he used to say he graduated from East <laughs> with our class. Great guy. Great guy. And, and Milner, hired, you know, you and I became affectionate uh, to a large degree with Milner when we were in Rotary together right. with him. We would play pranks on him and, and uh, 
tease him and this sort of thing, and he enjoyed that more than anything else. But last night. So he night, went to the high school as track coach. He did. And that's when coach, the first track they coach hired over Kelton. there. And I got to say that Coach Carden uh, left me some uh, uh, in good instruction as to what to look for in track, how to how to beautify the sites in which we did long jump and shot put and, and discus and all that sort of thing. And we were very successful in our track program. I got one picture in just a minute we'll show. But uh, if Philip will put up that first slide of the coaches that uh, we had, yeah, that that was Jerry Milton in the center there, and this might have been my second year. Tommy Allen on the left, and that's me on the right, and we were all young did, guys. Did, uh, Jerry came the same that same year to start with? Oh, that, that Jerry been came a year, year before I got there, so okay. he came '68, and then Tommy had been there as a teacher for a good while, and then right. uh, and later on began coaching, you know, and did real well in the middle school. Yeah, before and, that, he'd coached at uh, the the first Pop Warner League, which grew into he, the Mullins He coached league. the Bulldogs. Coached the Bulldogs, the Bulldogs. And it was only, it was a two-team league. It was just the That's Bulldogs right. and the Rebels. They played each other about three times and, and then <laughs> went somewhere and both teams played. Uh, but it was a... Tommy it, stayed with a single wing. He wanted, I think he was a single wing. He wanted to do what Dub Cooper did, I guess. You know, he, right. he was uh, with... He knew about that high school program. Right. And Jerry Milton, I kind of think Jerry might be in Murfreesboro at one time. I know he sold mortgage insurance, this sort of thing. I have seen him a time or two. There was one night that I sat with him at a Riverdale basketball game over there in uh, Murfreesboro. And Mary, my daughter, scored 41 points that night against Riverdale. Wow. I was never so excited that she did that and my old coach friend was sitting there and sit next there to me. Take it. She does that every night. You know, Jerry, she does that every night. <laughs> Not well really. trained and, and great jeans. Good jeans, that's right. Uh, I was going, last night, uh, ate supper with the Romeos at Gondola. What's uh, Romeo? What group's that now? It stands for Real Old Men Eating Out, Pat. With uh, emphasis, I would assume, on old. Yeah, and we were there, and I saw two of my former uh, uh, athletes and uh, students, uh, Tommy Hill and Lee Deckelman, a uh, young man that... Uh, uh, legends. Legends, legends. And I tell you, it was, it's so nice. And I say this for all these young men that I see, uh, young ladies either one, they, uh, the affection we show toward one another is just tremendous. You know, they remember me as tyrannical in a lot of ways and then they had <laughs> both of those needed did I say that word right I don't I use it so, very often but, but both of them needed a tyrant <laughs> they did <laughs> they did and, and uh, I had the pleasure of coaching both of them's boys in youth wrestling and they, got to be they're good good, good young men they, they went through they're a lot guys. I know but uh, then there's another picture I'm going to show this was the second year that I taught uh, and this is the track team that won the conference title and I don't have uh, I can't see that plain enough I, sh I should have had that picture with me to go over. I know one of the boys in the center there is Bobby Miles who just recently passed away and we'll miss Bobby I think he was 61 if I'm not mistaken that's correct and uh, you know there's a uh, uh, several in there and I I'm sorry I can't see it that great but uh, You'll, you'll find that uh, a lot of familiar faces of kids who are still around, and uh, some of my managers in there um, are, are, were just as, as uh, uh, some of them, they, one of the managers we saw, was it Bentley? Yeah. Was it, it was a manager at the high school, Chad and he did a really yeah. nice job. You know, there was a Dale Womack who was a manager for me along the way, and he wound up being a fireman in uh, Cookville, and he passed away. But no, uh, that's that was Bruce. Bruce. Bruce Womack. Bruce Womack. But right. but I have him right. He, right. I had said the name wrong, but it was Bruce Womack right. that that passed away, and he he uh, uh, he was a good manager, and wound up being so, a fireman. Roy Branch was a manager yeah. of mine. He wound up being a fireman. Richard Chastain did the same. I'm not so sure if I'm just creating good firemen you know they learn oh, to take care of I'm bragging on Bruce a little bit more uh, Bruce was a 
graduated at the high school to be a trainer. And yeah. it, it, uh, in the 60s and 70s, to get that training position when you were a senior was a kind of a lofty position that you were a rung ahead of the managers. Yeah. And uh, he did well enough to where he got a really nice scholarship at Tennessee Tech as, as a trainer. And that got him into the... He was well thought of in the Cookville uh -huh. area. He sure was. And yeah. uh, when he got cancer, he uh, was... Uh, was uh, he, uh, they, people had benefits for him and such as that. So Pat, it's been good talking about Old East Junior East. High School and we wished for a lot of more times that we could have sung, let them play the song Crying Time because we loved it when we called in the radio station Ben's play crying time for well, John, the West Junior High about School the, team. Uh, a similar song that uh, Coach Osteen was famous for. He, uh, if you remember when uh, Coach Osteen that was from Chapel Hill and one of your buddies, he was at the high school <laughs> in the early 60s and your principal yeah. at East. Yeah. But he was a football coach uh, and baseball, he was assistant football to Coach Cooper and he was a head baseball coach in the early 60s. And at that time, when you got your report card, you carried your report card from class to class. And he had a gentleman in his class named Nabob Simmons who had a real <laughs> deep voice and was a good singer. And um, if you didn't have a C, if you had something less than a C, he had Nabob come up by his desk just standing there and he'd say, now if it was uh, me, he'd say, come on up Pat Welch and Nabob hit it. And he would sing, what was the verse? See the big man cry, mama. And then he'd, he'd put a DRF on there and send you back. <laughs> we got to go, Pat. It's been that, good. That ought to be plenty. That ends up segment 42 of the conversation with John and Pat. And if we're able to return, we'll be here next week. Thank you. <laughs> Talking history about this and that. It's conversations with John and Pat. With John and Pat, with John and Pat. Keith Barnett here at Russell Barnett Ford of Winchester. Check out the 2018 Ford Expedition up to $11,000 off original MSRP. That's Russell Barnett Ford on 41 and Winchester, home with a lifetime powertrain warranty. And remember, my question is, why buy anywhere else? My wife, Jackie, has always been the life of the party but things changed when she couldn't be as active anymore. They told me I needed a double knee replacement. It's not as big a deal as it used to be, but she still needed to go to rehab. I was amazed at how good the therapists were at Life Care. They took really good care of me. They took excellent care of her, and now she's back doing the things she loves, and that makes everyone happy. Life Care Center of Tullahoma wants you to get active and live well. So you've been meaning to do something healthy, commune with nature, get outdoors and meet new people. We have the perfect solution. Come hike with us. You can find a Tennessee Trails Association chapter near you, including Clarksville, Columbia Franklin, Highland Rim, Jackson, Knoxville, Oak Ridge, Memphis, Murfreesboro, Nashville, Plateau at Crossville, and Upper Cumberland. We're on the web at tennesseetrails.org. It's fun, it's stress-free, and it's good for you. See you on the trails. All right, folks, we're back, and, you know, I told you earlier, this is pie week, and I'm a pie guy. I love pie. You can have all the cake you want to give me pie. But this is not about that kind of pie. This is not about pie or square or cornbread or round. This is about the numbers of pie. And Chuck Mangino is here with us today. He's been with us several times before. This is the pie guy right here. He's an award-winning mathematician, 
and he has a mind like a steel trap. And I'm going to turn this over to Chuck. He has two lovely assistants here with him. And uh, we're going to talk about pie. Uh, sounds good. Uh, it's that time of the year. And first, before I start, I want to introduce Gracie here. She'll be my pie girl. And Kristen, she's my pie girl here, and she'll be holding the thousand numbers. That, uh, that was my prop for America's Got Talent back in 2008. But anyway, uh, it's that time of the year, and of course, there's the pie celebrations is happening all over the country, all over the world, matter of fact. It's become really big. And one of them is the memorization of a type of, of pie here, which I have this and many more. And um, anyway. So you, there's a thousand numbers on there. Yes, sir. Yeah, if I get, if it gets real, real relaxed, I get real relaxed, I can go anywhere here and go up and down. I can go here. It's like I was showing the girls here, 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 here. here. I can bounce around instead of going continuous. And there's only like three other people in the country that can do that. I, at one time, I was ranked number nine in the nation, 35 in the world. But there's a kind of an elite group of us that can jump around here, 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 in the, in the same with And here. so somebody can tell you, go to the 50th number. Right. Usually, usually what happens, I like to make it even more complicated. And I, I'll put a zero like here and here, or every 100, and then I'll go five on each side. That makes it more challenging, and it shows more of my talent. And the same with here. And it's just like the, the girls. Um, if we could, we'll go to the cards just for a second. I'll show okay. you the cards. If we could take the cards and undo the thing there. And on the top card. You want me to hold that trophy? Yeah. Or if put you it don't on mind. the floor in front yeah. of you? Put yeah. it on the floor in front right of there, you. Right and there. I'll explain that. There you go. And I'll just go to the first four here and the first four here. Okay, the first four here is two of hearts. Is that correct? Yes. King of hearts? Yes. Okay, eight of hearts? Yes. And. Ace of Diamonds, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, Gracie, your top cards, my eyes are closed, is three of Diamonds. Yes. Nine of Diamonds. Yes. And the Queen of Spades and two of Hearts. Yes. Okay, good. Now, if you could flip your cards upside down, just upside down, and you'll have the Nine of Clubs, is that correct? Okay, and the card next to that, uh, or the 51st card, is uh, Ace of Hearts. Yes. And then Seven of Clubs. Yes. And the Ace of Clubs. Yes. Okay, and Gracie, if you could turn your cards upside down, you will have the Two of Clubs. Yes. King of Clubs. Yes. Okay, Four of Spades. Yes. Okay, and the Jack of Spades. Yes. Okay, good. I'll stop there. Thank you very much. Um, that, I can do that with a, de a deck of cards that big. I mean, it's unlimited what I can do. But anyway, um, and then I so, can do this. So if somebody, if somebody, if I said, okay, let's go to the 27th card in there. Yeah, I, that's what we were doing before the camera started. Right. They went right in the middle, and I did that, and then I yeah. went to each card on each side. Okay. So. And I could do that with, I think it's 300. 12 decks all at the same time and it's a long I, it's a long things. story and a big, I, there's many things I could do and there's a big many brain. things <laughs> yeah and this here and this and there's other things I could do but anyway my objective here uh, uh, for Pi Day this year uh, I've talked about this since 2007 and this trophy here it says uh, Arnold Air Force Base STEM science technology engineering and, uh, and Math, a um, hundred a hundred places of pi memorization, and what this is for. I have made three of these for the Hands On Science Center in mm -hmm. Tullahoma. Right. And if someone comes, you know, eighteen or younger or, or whatever, and they memorize a hundred numbers of pi, like right here is starting here, and it goes down to here. I can't find my thing right there. And it's, you know, 3.14159265358979323842 and then 4621971 and so on all the way down to there. Now I can go forward or I can go backwards right. or I can go 
five numbers here, five numbers there, five numbers, you know. But if they but can you go, can do that to a thousand numbers. Yeah, I can go. Yeah, if I get in that bubble, get real relaxed, I can just go. And I've bro I've broken a sp unofficially broken a speed record before, but the thing about it is, the more relaxed I get, the faster I get. Yeah. And I. Well, you're opening your mind. Yeah, my mind's like completely open, and uh, so. But if somebody comes in and learns pi for a hundred numbers, okay, they get a trophy. They get a trophy. They get this trophy Good. or the other two trophies. Okay. Now I'm going to say, my birthday is June 22nd. Right. And. I've already talked to uh, the, t the people of Telahoma Awards and Gifts in the mall. Uh -huh. They're the ones that made it, great people. And uh, they understood where I was coming from with right, this. Right. But, they, but they said, more or less, if people, I said, what if there's more than three? He laughed. He says, "We'll work with you." Yeah, great yeah. people in the mall. Yeah, great. Yeah. All right, mall. let's let's get over here to the okay. stem because we're going to run out of time. Okay. This, this, I have come up with this. It took me months, and it took me three weeks to produce this. The people at Office Max made this for me. This is the new grand challenge for STEM okay. for the STEM program. Um, it's it's binary pie. Okay. And what it is, I've converted the first hundred numbers of pi to binary. Okay. And there's a big, nice trophy that'll be made for that. All right. So this is this is another memorization. This, this is another memorization category challenge. challenge. And as far as I know, as far as the STEM, this has never been done before. This is the this is the very first time it's ever been done. I am presenting this, and this is a grand challenge. And my thing in, in 2007. When I first started, and y'all had me on TV, right. I said, I want to do something with memory to put Telahoma and Hands On Science Center on the map. And, and this, this is, is it. it. Okay. This, this is the grand challenge here. This, this is it. And uh, Olga Oakley, she's the Air Force STEM director, and I've talked with her and so forth, uh -huh. and everything's a green light go. Uh, Outstanding. I'll be, yeah. It, it's really. So uh, will, it, will this be on display at the Science Center? Yeah, I'm giving this, I'm giving this and this to the Hands-On Science Center. Okay. Yeah. I'm so there this. will also be maybe handouts. I've got handouts. That, that somebody can take home to learn Exactly. It from. And I love doing that because what happens, I can tell when somebody's really interested because usually they're really shy. Uh -huh. And what happens when they do it, it gives them an identity. Right. You know, and, and, and it, it gives them an all factor with their friends and peers. There you go. And I can tell when somebody's really interested because I hand it out and I'll hand them another one. I said, now put this one on your wall, but you use this one to practice with. Right. And uh, there, there's an understanding. And like I said, all my stuff started when I was four. Right. Nobody under 1962 when I was four, nobody understood me. We understand you now. Yeah, people were kind of listening. And, now. We, <laughs> and I want to. Yeah. We need to understand we're out of time. Yeah. <laughs> so fine. this, this will be at the Science Center by when? Uh, uh, I'll probably, uh, two, let's see, Thursday, I'll be giving a demonstration at 10.30. Okay. And then they'll be there. Okay. And uh, anybody wants to say, go to this number, go to right, this right. number. Right, uh, They'll have yeah. information. Yes. Pie guy. All righty. Chuck Mangino. Thank Thanks you, sir. Thanks for coming, buddy. Love you. Thank right. you. We'll be Thank right you, back girls. after these it. messages. Thank you. And okay. it, uh, I'll, maybe his brain will cool down. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see you in a minute. It's time for every family and business in Telahoma to go green and recycle. Telahoma Public Works makes it simple and easy to recycle. Just place your recyclable materials, paper, plastic, aluminum, and cardboard beside your garbage container on the same day your garbage is picked up. Your recycled materials don't have to be in a fancy container. Recycling is not only the right thing to do, it makes sense. Recycling pays. Paying to bury our garbage costs each of us. Please do your part. Let's go green, Telahoma, and recycle. Hi, I'm Cindy. And I'm Jacob. I'm the Rooster. And I'm the Red Mate. And we would like to welcome you to Roosterware. Yes, Roosterware is a cottage industry producing accessories for men, women, children, babies, and pets. All items are hand cut and sewn locally. Roosterware specializes in bow ties, pocket squares, scarves, cufflinks, neckties, and aprons of all sizes for all ages. Baby products include onesies, diaper covers, bibs, and burp pads. All bow ties, tie it yourself, or pre tied come with an adjustable neckband. All products can be made with the material of your choice as special orders are available upon request. Don't be standing back looking at fashion. Create your own with Roosterware. Come visit us at 
roosterandredmaiden.com to find our handcrafted designs for the cock of the walk. <laughs> to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat apples and bananas? Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. TV land and thank you camera lady and camera gentlemen for putting a good sharp clear picturesque colorful picture on the screen thanks John for your introduction and we're just glad to be here this morning to share with you some thoughts that come back to mind we had the privilege last week of <clears throat> of taking a couple of days off and went to a cousin's reunion in Branson uh, uh, Missouri and of course that's the home of a lot of great shows but I think one of the big attractions there was downtown Branson is an old old community but uh, one of the highlights of and uh, special places that tourists and everybody likes to go to they have an old-fashioned five and dime store and that's what they call it uh, I think Burke's five and dime right downtown on the Main Street, which brings back a whole lot of memories uh, about early Tullahoma dime stores. And I don't remember exactly the date, but one of the early, early dime stores in Tullahoma was Freeman's. Mr. Freeman had moved here from Arkansas and um, uh, had his family here, and they came and he established Freeman's Five and Dime Store. And I think it was in the 100 block of, um, North, uh, let's see, um, yeah, North Atlantic Street, uh, a, do a door or two from uh, Taylor's Pharmacy, which is now, of course, the veranda. And uh, he had a big red sign on the front uh, door, uh, Freeman's Five and Dime. And then Mr. E.B. Franklin had a part, part of a uh, uh, dime store on the 100 block of uh, West Lincoln Street, about where the um, the Frames by You building is uh, today, and he uh, uh, had a Mr. Uh, Franklin had a shoe repair shop in there, and he sold uh, Westinghouse appliances. And part of the store was uh, uh, squared off as a, a dime store, and you know, and I don't I don't remember. I don't know why, where they got the name Five and Dime Store because most everything, even way back then, was uh, more than that. But uh, anyway, they have such a variety of things that uh, uh, you need, many things you probably don't need, but uh, uh, household items, kitchenware, dinnerware, uh, uh, towels, blankets, sheets, clothes, shoes, uh, hardware tools all that kind of stuff that uh, is used around the house or in business and uh, I'm really amazed at what all that they do have in dime stores and then uh, 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 Coons came to Tullahoma and it was in the building where um, uh, Fast Jack's uh, restaurant is uh, today and it uh, it was uh, the uh, dime store that Easter time had colored baby chicks in their window. They must have sold hundreds and hundreds of those baby colored chickens. 
and uh, it, it burned though, and uh, and I believe in um, probably the early 50s, and then around on uh, 100 block of uh, West Grundy Street, where uh, the uh, law offices of Copeland and Conley and Hazard are today, uh, was Re Redford's Dime Store, and they had a lunch counter in there, and you could step inside that front door of Redford's Dime Store, and you could smell. Uh, uh, real good cooking. If you, you, if you weren't hungry when you went in, you, the aroma in there was such that you, you'd you be hungry. And and they had two little ladies in there that uh, I think they catered more to their lunch counter than they did the rest of the store. But Redford's, I believe, was uh, headquartered in, um, in Chattanooga. But they had a big variety of, of good merchandise there. And then Sterling. Sterling was dime store was probably the largest one and uh, they uh, tore out the front and gutted the buildings uh, adjacent to uh, again the uh, Taylor's Pharmacy that was on the corner of Atlantic and Lincoln Street and uh, put up big big Sterling's uh, 10 cent store in there and then at one time if I remember correctly uh, it or another dime store was uh, on um, North Atlantic Street uh, next door to the old post office, what is now Total Graphics. And uh, I think the building that it was in uh, had been uh, Weddington's Hardware Store and uh, Tillahoma Hardware. And even before that, it was, um, um, or, well, now, now it's Arnold's. Or, uh, furniture warehouse, but I think there was a dime store there at one time. And then we never will forget Locke's dime store. Locke's dime store was next to the First National Bank on uh, Atlantic Street, and it was probably smaller than the rest of them, but uh, Miss Cope worked in there, and Miss Bates, and uh, had a lot of friends that, that worked at, at Locke's. And uh, uh, at that time, most of the stores did their, their best advertising were their window window displays of course they don't have many of those now but the dime stores have meant a whole lot to tell home in the past and of course uh, the dollar general is here and uh, the family dollar store is here now that's uh, much larger than those used to be but they still have that big variety of things and merchandise that people need now this is not the end of the story because there's a whole lot more to come. We thank you for watching and hope you have a real good day. Smoking tobacco accounts for three of every ten fire deaths in the United States. Tullahoma Fire Department, Tullahoma Fire Department, need you en route to a structure fire, 202 Main Street, heavy smoke showing, neighbors advise child trapped inside. Lighters, matches, and associated smoking paraphernalia are the leading cause of preschooler fire deaths. We as firefighters know that most structure fires can be prevented. Come on! I've got one! I've got one! Command, this is primary search. We have a victim. Need EMS to meet us at the front door. Please help us to give you a fighting chance. This can be prevented. Contact the Tullahoma Fire Department for a free home safety inspection. What's a Tennessee vacation? It starts off like any road trip, and then boom. Adventure and thrills everywhere you look, which happens to be some of the most beautiful scenery in the country. Music here, history there, and all kinds of green in between. Come relax and unwind, or bring the crowd for some stargazing, or stargazing. Whatever you do, come hungry and expect an awesome soundtrack. It's all right here in Tennessee. We're playing your song. For a free vacation guide, visit tnvacation.com. 
Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. Welcome back. I am so fortunate to be sitting on this set with these two beautiful young ladies that you just saw previously. <laughs> this is Gracie Lewis and Kristen Guess, and they are seniors at, at Franklin County High School, and they have this project coming up that touched my heart, and I think it will yours. Uh, Gracie, yes. since I've known you since you were this high, <laughs> <laughs> tell me a little bit about the prom project. Okay, so basically what we're doing is the Time to Shine prom. And it I is... I like that, the Time to Shine. Mm -hmm. It is a prom for the CDC kids. Yeah. So the, the kids with disabilities and, you know, mental... Special needs. Yeah, special needs. And we, a group of students, so it's basically like my friend group, a group of us have, we've gotten together and we're putting together this prom. We're raising money for these kids so okay so you're putting together the prom mm -hmm. and you're trying to what are you trying to do with the money so Kristen. with the money we buy decorations we rent tuxes for the boys and um, actually for the dresses we're asking for donations from anybody who has dresses that they don't use or you know just don't want just don't and like want you have so you went to the prom and it's 10 years later and your prom dress is still hanging in the closet mm -hmm. you guys would like to have them mm -hmm. and uh, if you'll contact Franklin County High School yes or take them up there or they won't they can even call me and I'll get them to Gracie so okay. that would be okay or bring them here at the studio and I'll take care of it anyway this is the third year I think that you all have or somebody in the school has done this, usually a senior project? Yes, ma'am. Um, it's usually the seniors that are in charge, and then at school, you know, they'll announce over the PA system, you know, if you need service hours for Tennessee Promise or just for any other club, they'll be like, you know, come help this group set up for the prom because, you know, we got to set for food and the decorations and all that. And so we over here, the food, the decorations, the entertainment. The, and what is the entertainment? Have you decided yet? Luckily, one of the teachers is going to DJ for the prom, Good. so we won't have to pay. We won't have to pay that. We can save the funds for other things we need. And when is the prom? April sixth. April. Well, that's close. Mm -hmm. So you need, <laughs> if you have any dresses to donate, please do it soon. And are you taking those for donations, or are you ordering those fitted? We're ordering them You're fitted. Ordering those fitted. Mm -hmm. What a fabulous thing! I think that whether you got a service project out of it points or not, it's a gift of your time and your energy and a loving gift and I really appreciate the fact that you're doing it. Franklin County is uh, has some really good things going on at the school now. Gracie is the drum major with a band and the bands have a lot of good things going on. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite sport or activity? Well, um, I played soccer and basketball at the school for four, my four years over there, and so that took up most of my time, so right. I didn't really have time <laughs> so for much I mean, Obviously, you're busy girls with a lot to do, but you're taking the time to fulfill this prom project. Mm -hmm. and tell me one more time the name of the project. The Time to Shine Prom. I don't know why I can't remember the, the Time to Shine. And the, uh, the theme we came up with this year, we're doing Candyland, yeah. and so we're calling it Meant to Be. Like M-I-N-T to be. That's cute. Meant to be. So you'll have decorations. Mm -hmm. uh, that like oversized candy and oversized stuff. Oversized candy and stuff like that. We thought it would be cute and they would enjoy it, but we also won't make it, you know, too tacky. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it won't yeah. get out of hand. Yeah, you want it to be, want it to be fun. Mm -hmm. What sort of entertainment do you usually have? Is it a DJ with the place? They'll, and stuff? Yeah, and there will be photo booths there. Oh, good. And, you get and with like props and stuff, maybe that they can take pictures so with. So, do you guys take care of the flowers for the girls, or anything like that, or the boutonnieres for the boys? We might need to. We have yeah. actually yeah. haven't thought we about haven't, that. We haven't thought about that, that but I mean, yeah, that would be something do. that we and would take care of. Florists that would be willing to possibly donate some carnations, mm -hmm. which would be really nice for this kind of project. So, do you all, y'all are there at the prom? Yes. To. So we will. Let's see. Last year. Student Council kind of announced to the club, they were like, 
if you want to go and dance with the kids, because they would really enjoy that. We, yeah. they, we had students come and dance with the kids and entertain them. That's great. While we were there. And do the kids have to have a date or they just, they can come? They can just single. come. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is good. Not everybody has a date, let's face it. I mean, it. They're, they're together all the time because it's kind of the class, you know, so yeah. they all just kind of go together. So girls, you're seniors, you're in the second part of your senior year, and where are you going to school next year? I will be attending the University of Alabama Huntsville, hopefully to get a degree in chemical engineering. Well, that just blows my mind. <laughs> that's a very uh, honorable to do that and Thank you. ambitious, and I'm proud of you for doing that. Gracie, in the long run, I know you're going to Montlow. Do you have a, you going to, what do you, do you know what you'll major in yet? I want to major in some area of the aerospace field, like maybe engineering, I'm not sure. But I'll go to Motlow just to do the general education classes, right. and then I may attend MTSU. Well, I know that you've done a lot of things for the Civic Center, because mm -hmm. I've known you since you were little, and uh, I think obviously you're both very giving girls, and so don't forget the prom that's coming up in Franklin County for special needs people, and if you have something to give, donation money is always good. <laughs> I think we have to go. Thanks, girls. Thank Gracie. you. It's so good to have you, and Kristen, so Thank nice you. to meet you. Am I done? <laughs>
well, I'll make you something, and, and I got some, we had some wire, and I made her a wire, and that way she can take it and put it in a window yeah, or at her office a, and tack it up idea. and yeah. have socks hanging off of it, because those are, those are great looking socks, and they're very well made socks, and they're $8 a pair, and, you know, you, you find a pair of good socks, they're going to cost you at they're least that. They're going to cost you more than $8. You know, and all that money goes to Alzheimer's Tennessee, so if you're a big orange fan, or you just... You like purple or whatever, or you, you just want to support. What you want. Yeah. you want to support the fight against Alzheimer's. Sock out Alzheimer's. I like that. You know, and and their 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 official tagline for Alzheimer's Tennessee is make Alzheimer's a memory. Yeah, and that would which be which is which is well, yeah. That is, that's a beautiful. Yeah, that's line. a beautiful line. It really about, is. It's and, all about memory and. What is the movie? I, there's a movie that every time it comes on, I can't help but watch it because my mother had Alzheimer's. Ah, no, the Notebook. The Notebook, yes. I've watched it probably Maverick, five times. Maverick. Uh, right. Gardner. And, and it's true with all James Alzheimer's, Garner. just in very small spaces of time uh -huh. that at least my mom come back. would. She'd come back just for just a short moment, and then she'd be gone again. And that just really touched me. So oh, yeah, that, hope, that was a great movie. I do hope people will support the Alzheimer's Walk. Oh, yes, 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 yes. thing that's going on. Yeah, and it'll be fun. It'll be fun just to come watch. Oh, yeah. It'll I be mean, fun we'll, just we, to watch. I mean, a tricycle, adult tricycle race. The office in Knoxville <laughs> has these, they bought these adult tricycles. They're, you know, they're I that size. That. Yeah. Big enough for an adult to get on and ride. That's I great. think it'd be funny for an adult to ride a child's tricycle <laughs> myself <laughs> with their legs out to the side, yeah. you know, like that. But uh, it'll be a great event and it'll be, and it'll be fun just to come down there and watch. And it's a free event. Oh, yeah. There, there'll there'll be that. food there and uh, there'll be, uh, uh, there'll be, uh, drinks and water and stuff like that and Cat Murray's going to be there with music and microphones and and Bill uh, is going to run the run the uh, trivia game and the trivia team will probably be involved in trivia the whole time of the Today, event just keep that going so there will be there will be people come specifically just to play trivia and the date was May 11th May correct? 11th that's right don't so forget don't it. forget about it and uh, we thank you for watching and come see us again we'll be back next time